I, I was getting no sales at the beginning. No one, no one cared about ClickUp. No one knew who we were. No one thought we'd be around in six months. We focus on building relationships and we're always thinking it through the lens of how can we build win-win relationships. What advice do you have for bridging departments that kind of run their own place a lot of the time? Ali Abdal was, was the biggest Grand Slam I've ever worked with. What is your philosophy for, for influence? The key is, uh, I, I almost wish I wasn't going to wear the secret, but... Welcome back to the Zero to One podcast. You're about to hear from one of my favorite people on the planet, Chris Cunningham, who is head of social media marketing and influencer over at ClickUp. As a founding team member, he is just full of exciting and fun stories. And ClickUp is really changing the game when it comes to influencer with B2B. So excited for this conversation. Enjoy. All right, Chris, what's up, man? It's been a while since we've talked. I feel like um, the last time we we sing, I heard like the most incredible founder stories I, I may have ever heard. I think I laughed so hard that I cried. So I'm hoping to <laughs> dig into that. But um, it's been really fun watching what you guys have been up to at ClickUp, seeing that explosive growth. Uh, you, you know, Even your rise and becoming head of social media marketing, I know you're a, a founding team member. So let's just, let's start there. Um, I would love to get to know you, maybe just start you know, who you are, what you're doing, and, and this take us through the origin story, both for you and, and ClickUp. You got it. All right. Well, I'm Chris Cunningham. I'm from a very small town called Martinsville, Virginia. No mall, no movie theater, none of that stuff. Um, so growing up, you know, I was very, very interested in just getting out and finding a way to, to, to make my mark and travel and see the world. And the first thing I found was, you know, was, was technology. I thought that would be the way. Uh, I went to college, was at Virginia Tech, was always just trying, I was just bored, man. Cause in school and marketing, you know, they're teaching like billboards and, you know, newspaper ads and things. I'm like, no one, no one even cares about this stuff. Anymore. Although billboards was a big part of our strategy. I met Zeb uh, in college and, you know, we became fast friends cause we were both bored and we, we just want to do other things. We started managing a rapper, KJ, and that actually did pretty well. We went on tour with Wiz Khalifa, Mac Miller, but eventually we failed and <laughs> learned a nice lesson. But from that, we learned the power of social media because the way we got attention for KJ was social media. And Zeb just really studied and scoured to, to learn all that. And from there, I graduated and Zeb was still at school. And I went to, I was like, look, I want to go work a real job. I'm still going to help you with this little social media. We had built a little agency after failing with the rapper. We had a few clients here and there. We're basically helping with social growth. At that time, not many people really knew how to grow. You only had a lot of followers if you were a straight up celebrity. Now everyone's got followers. Mm -hmm. Right. But we, we had found cool ways to like, to engage and to kind of get that moving. So I went to go work at a company called Cvent. Cvent is a uh, event management software. It was a pop in company. I think I joined when it was like 150 people and, you know, really grew. It grew to over a thousand within like my first year there. I grew to over a thousand people, got massive funding and then went public after like a year and a half of me being there. I'm the youngest manager. So I learned a ton. And that was like what really set off my career of understanding how a company works. But then after we went public, you know, I hit my ceiling. I got my stock and I really want to challenge. And Zeb gives me a call. I'm living in DC. And he's like, look, man, I really want to, I want to grow this thing. Like come down to Charlotte, North Carolina. Let's, let's build. And I never really wanted to call more in my life because as much as I loved what I was doing at CVAN and the people, I want to challenge. I want to be like you guys. I want to build my own thing, you know, and I want to build it with a friend. How, how mm -hmm. cool, like who? Who else gets the opportunity to do that like you two do? Yeah. So I did that. And my parents called me crazy. I remember my mom asked my grandfather, who was like a VP at Energizer, to call me and say, look, stay at the company, become the VP. I'm like a VP in like 12 years. You like, for what? You know, that's so long. I think I think I can beat this and I respect you all's opinion, what you did in your career. I'm taking this fucking journey. You know, like I'm I'm going, I don't care about it. I can go get a job like this anytime. You know, they're, they're a dime a dozen, these corporate jobs. So I went for it. I moved to Charlotte and, you know, that's where we started the agency and really blew it up. And I remember when I came there, the agency was already making like 40, 60 K a month, you know, just Zeb and like a contractor or two, no salesperson, no nothing. So I started getting in and our agency is kind of hot because we had this, this software that no one else has that Zeb has built. And the way we got this software was I was in India for Cvent and I saw they had these, like this whole room full, like 10 people on social media. I could see them on the TV, just liking, following, commenting. I was like, what are you you guys are just like engaging with pages. Uh, yeah, that's that's our, our role. And uh, I was like, well, I can, I'm pretty sure Zev can build a program to do that. So I called him, he built the program and this program was hot. 
So now I'm calling all these companies, I'm pitching saying, hey, look, rather than you paying these social media managers or whatever, we have a program that'll, that'll work while they sleep. So it was a hot product that did really well. We grew and uh, this was our thing. And one day Zeb had a near death experience. He almost you know, died. And he came back to us and he's like, dude, I don't want to be these like social media growth guys. Like, I, I just don't want, I don't care how much money we're making. And, and mind you, we went to where we, like, I think I remember our biggest month was like 680K. We almost hit 700K a month with like 10 employees. It was awesome. So we were, we were doing great. And I, uh, printing, printing. I mean, I didn't even, I was like 23, man. I didn't even know what to 24. I didn't know. Man, I know we might have to really rethink our agency strategy. <laughs> well, dude, it was kind of the wild, it was wild, wild west, lucky times. Yeah. Well, and you'd kind of want to, cause I was being an idiot back then. I was definitely not spending the money as smart as I wish I would have, <laughs> um, you know, but I was having fun. And so we, he's like, you know what? No, we're going to create something. We're going to fix social media. We're going to fix what's wrong because so many people are getting addicted to these likes and these, we saw it, man. Like, like a drug, people were hitting us like, I, I need more followers. I need more likes. And we were like, this is not a good thing we're creating. And mind you, we had very famous clients, you know, like tons of them. But um, so I got a really cool network from that. But then he decided, let's let's be tech guys. Let's be the next Zuckerberg. Let's create a social media app that fixes all these problems. So we looked at all the social media app. And at the time, Snapchat was hot. You know, like you send a picture in seven seconds, it was gone. And Zeb was like, why, the, why are they doing that? Like they're erasing the best part of people's life, their memories. They All their memories could be stored and they're erasing it. So we created an app called Memory. And M-I-M-R-I, because no one says memory, they say memory. And man, dude, like I mean, we put in four months, we hired Alex Sherkowski from IBM, bought him in on the dream. He's a genius, helped build their blue mix. We brought in Wes and we had the, we had the team, we had the team of four. We, we built this thing and I was like the face and I remember like getting getting interviewed by news station, really thinking this is it. Like we are gonna be the next Zuckerberg. And then I remember waking up one morning and just seeing all these texts and stuff. And Snapchat came out with something called Snapchat Memories. Oh, and just like that, like it was dagger. gone. I'm like, you know, like imagine like it's it's like imagine you're like zero to one. Imagine going in and telling everyone zero to one, we're gonna have this agency, and all of a sudden it's just gone. You know, and everyone publicly sees it because you're bragging, like, hey, we're building the next big thing. It hurt, man. It hurt. Um, so from there, we, we just, we swallowed our pride and we had built an internal software that we called like mission control center, just because Zeb hated, as you guys know, he hated all, using all these different softwares. He hated it. He's like, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm building it all. I'm not using Trello for one, Asana for another, Jira for another. And so we had already moved to Palo Alto to build this dream. Like we, we have a house in Silicon Valley. We thought that's what we were going to do. So now we pivot. And, you know, it ends up being, in my opinion, this might be one of the bigger pivots. We look back to this and this might be one of the bigger pivots in history. We pivoted to project management software quick, like on a dime. And we just started building it out and no questions asked. We didn't waste time because we didn't have enough money to waste time about thinking about what we we're going to do next. We had spent a lot on memory. So here we are in Palo Alto on one of the most prominent streets living in a mansion because we couldn't afford office space there and we all need somewhere to live. So we, that's why I see why people, you know, in the show choose a house because it's expensive. So this is really how ClickUp was born. And from there, we just started building. Uh, we took a lot of advice from our advisors because we had the CTO of Facebook across the street, CEO of Intel. We had very prominent people in our corner. And then we just dove all in. And the rest was really history. So, yeah, I mean, we've, we've built our whole agency on the back of ClickUp. So um, can say. <laughs> thanks Appreciate for that. For the, yeah. Thanks for the account, uh, Chris. Of Not course, of a man. day without it. But it's been exciting to see the, the astronomical rise um, and kind of have a front seat to, to all this cool stuff you guys are building. Um, curious. So y your role, especially early on to today, uh, I want to know you being head of social media and an influencer, what role did that play early on? And today, what is your philosophy on that now? Man, that's a cool question. So to be honest, nothing. Uh, well, like in the agency, yes, you know, obviously I learned social and influencer, but as we started ClickUp, there, there wasn't a role for that in the early days, right? But I knew I was in on the mission. I wasn't going to miss out. And, you know, Zeb, Zeb offered this. We had a bigger team at the time. He offered more to come work, you know, for ClickUp. But they, they knew, he was very honest. Like, hey, you're going to be working seven days a week. We're going to be working like 16 to 18 hours a day sometimes. It's, it's going to be crazy. You know, we're not drinking. We're not going out. There is no, this, this is it. You know, if you, if you come on this mission, you're in. So, you know, I was just trying to get in where I fit in. You know, I wasn't a coder. And at the beginning, a lot of it was development work until we could go live, but I wasn't going to waste the time and money. So what I did was I just studied. I studied everything, a comp like every competitor we had, which was a ton. There's a ton of project management softwares. I studied them all. Um, 
I really started trying to learn marketing. I wrote blogs. I learned how to run Facebook ads. You know, was I great? No, but I could still run them and set them up. Um, so I was just kind of a jack of all trades. And then as, as the product got out, I was our first sales rep and first customer service rep. That was my real job. I was VP of sales at first, and then I became VP of sales and customer success. So, you know, I'm just making calls every day. I'm watching this tool called Full Story where I could see, you know, people logging into ClickUp and see what company they're from and how they're using it. And if they got lost or they messed something up, and then I could go back to the dev team and say, hey, people are getting lost at this button. They don't see it here. And then I'd reach out to them. And eventually I, I was getting no sales at the beginning. No one, no one cared about ClickUp. No one knew who we were. No one thought we'd be around in six months. They just wanted to work with the ones who had been around. So finally, I had to take a different approach and we got very scrappy. So my a philosophy I will give you is if you're starting something new and you guys know this, you got to be scrappy. Like you just got to yeah. do shit no one else is going to do. So what we did was we built this program we, we called AppGator. AppGator would take and pull the lowest reviews of our competitors. So if someone gave a one star on Captera or to, to Asana or a two star to Jira on GetApp, I got that notification and I could look them up on LinkedIn <laughs> and I'd find them. And I'd be like, hey, look, I know you hate Jira. I hate them too. You know, and, I, and we built this software because we hate that they make you work a certain way because of the same reason I see you complaining about. And all of a sudden, like I started getting some traction. I started getting, you know, started getting some people there. And I'll never forget, uh, I'm talking to this guy, Perry Worth. He works at Accenture and I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to pitch him. And finally he's like, you know what, Chris? There is tons of software like farther ahead of you guys, but you're releasing features every single week. You're listening to your customers and you're fixing a lot of the problems in the space. I'm going to buy for my side company three seats today. I didn't even know how to take his payment. I was almost speechless. I actually was just, I've gotten <laughs> so many no's. I didn't know what a yes was or what to do after the fact. So I just remember being like, yeah, Perry, I'm going to be right back in touch. You know, and I, I had to make up pricing on the fly. We didn't even have yearly pricing. We made up monthly price. So I just like ran in, I ran into Zeb's office. I'm like, yo, deal in, like, we're on to something, you know? And from there, uh, we made up the yearly pricing. He gave, we found a way to, to take payments. And that was kind of, you know, what it was. And, and, and from there, my role did, a, did definitely grow. Uh, customer service became more important because as I closed more deals, then we realized how important it is to take care of these people. So at the time, we sold a phone line. People could call me. So I'm selling you the, the, soul, the tool. And then you could also call back and complain to me if there was a bug. It was super stressful times, to be honest. Like, we don't have a phone line to click up now because it'd be crazy, right? Like, we deal with it through chat, through email, like everyone. Um, but from that, I, as we grew and became a big company, I was like, man, I'm not going to be our, like, this is outgrowing what I know, you know, and I need to be fair to Zeb. So I remember coming to him and just saying, dude, like, I know where this is going. Like, you probably need to bring in a real VP of sales, someone who's done that before. And we did. We brought in Matt Bauman, who had been at, you know, Pinterest and many other massive companies. And uh, thank goodness, because I was starting to get like over my head of how to handle this, how to build a full, I never built a sales team like this. I was just a smooth talker. And could could handle a few things, but this was getting crazy. So from there, I knew I wanted to do what I love. And but at the time, influencer marketing really wasn't a thing in tech. This is back in like, I don't know, 2018 or something. So I told him, I was like, look, man, let me just go study marketing. I want to, I want to move to the marketing side. Let me go to move to LA, take a break. We've worked for like five years. I've given you everything I have for like seven. Let me have a little fun in LA, you know, and really how I met met you all. Uh, I was like, let me go make some connections. Go go use those connections we had in our early days. And I want to go study marketing. I want to go work for a massive agency. I want to see how other companies spend their money. And I want to see, because I really believe that I could. this influencer marketing could be a part of tech. I think it's going to become more than influencer marketing, just, just selling a water bottle or a coffee. I think we can you know, persuade people this way. So I did. And I went for a year. I learned from Elevator and, and Dan Fleischman. I met so many amazing connections. Uh, I mean, it's I, these connections are really how I've elevated ClickUp and how I've been able to find you guys and so, so many more. And my philosophy has changed a lot on influencer marketing. When I was in Elevator when, with you guys, you know, things were different. It was just put the product in there and make it look cool. Now it's it's so much more. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking for people that they learn from. And as you do now too, mm -hmm. we all learn from someone. When you want to get better at influence, like I have, a, I have a 30 minutes on my calendar every single five days a week, Monday through Friday, just study influencer marketing, just study the space, right? And there's people I learn from, there's people who I look up to still. And I want those people because same, if you're a developer, anyone uses ClickUp, right? If you're a developer, if you're even a, uh, a, a content creator, anything, you, you learn from someone. I want those people to be my influence. On that, on that note, um, I completely agree with you. Like it's really important to save time, hold time to be learning, checking out trends, seeing what other companies are doing successfully, look at their creative strategy, look at the campaigns that they're running. Who do you look to or look towards uh, when it comes to getting 
that information? Like who influences you when it comes to where you're getting your influence and marketing knowledge and expertise? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of it is 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 different creators. Um, I have one right here. Christopher Claffin has been a really good one for me. I was actually just talking to him about coming over to ClickUp. He crushes it on TikTok. TikTok is one thing I just, I have not understood. Um, also, Roberto Nicholson, I believe is how you say his last name. Let me make sure I say that right. Um, yeah, Roberto Nixon. Roberto Nixon, in my opinion, is hands down, like, I think he's the best creator I've ever seen in the space. And he has this quote that that really hit me, and I think it'll hit you guys too, is like, the key to networking is just doing cool shit. Because you know how it is. Like, I watch you guys grow with zero to one, and I want to keep I want to keep watching what you're doing. I want to learn. I learn from you guys. I watch your campaigns. Like, I see the new clients you bring on and, and how you run these campaigns. I learn from watching people who are doing cool shit. So I, I would say it's, it, I love seeing what you guys do with your clients. I've never really seen an agency that does it in the way you guys do. It takes such handholding. Actually, it takes care rather than just trying to hurry up. As content creation wise, Roberto Nixon is, I mean, just watch his content, man. It, he takes you on a journey every single time. He's using AI. He's teaching you. His newsletter's insane. I'm learning how how I want to be. Akil Wade is another one. He does an amazing job at, at taking something, teaching you, and then giving you the tools to do it. So I, I'm learning how to create content from them because more or less, I'm learning how to create content myself because I, I think the best mm-hmm. thing that I've done in this job is try to be an inf- influencer myself. And not because I care about getting brand deals. or, or I want the respect. And everyone in the space now knows me because they see me doing it too. They see me creating the content. They see that I know their struggle. I know what it takes to create content. I know what it's like to be successful. Um, so it's, you know, I think I'm in this journey with them and that that really helps a lot. But yeah, I can name people for days. There's so many more I'm probably forgetting uh, that I look up to, but there's a lot to learn from. I um, loved that question, Riley, but it did derail us from the first question a little bit. Uh, I want to make sure we get the, the philosophy now. So click up Oh, today. yeah. Um, what is your philosophy for for influencer? My philosophy today is you really need to know where where your um, where your ICP lives and you know your your ideal customer profile. Where where do they live? Like for us, it has grown now. ClickUp. It used to just be hey, anyone in the world, I want you to use ClickUp. Now we're growing, right? And I want I want large companies to look up to us. I want them to learn from us. So now I have to create different content, right? A CEO learns much differently than just a regular person. And we also need to understand who's, who buys ClickUp. PMO. PMO is a new project management office. It's like the, the new hot term. And I've had to study that myself and learn that. Um, so th- those, who, those who guide projects, I'm sure you, you do have one. I've met your guy. I forget his name, but you have a project manager who's awesome at your company, right? Like, and most every company has a nucleus. That person who's saying, what are the tasks that are happening and how are they moving forward? So what I'm doing is I'm learning. And now you got to take a step further. You can't just know the community you have to know where they hang out. What makes them want to, what, what do they want to flock to? What makes them want to feel like you're giving them a hug or like, like you're giving them some value. And that is why like right now I'm building um, like a, like a docu-series type new podcast I'm working on as we speak where I go in and, and not just like, you know, interview, like I'm, I'm fully trying to figure out what they do in their business and bring back ClickUp, but almost have like a, a game or, you know, something at the end, some, some big reveal. I'm still working on this strategy. In this, I'm learning that you have to have a community. You have to have people that they learn from, and you cannot really just sell your product. You got to just be willing to to give the value and, and know that they're going to know that you did that for them, and they'll respect you for that. That is how people that are very high up, CEOs, COOs, the only way they're going to give your product a look by an influencer marketing is by actually learning from something you did, like actually knowing that week by week you're going to give them an awesome newsletter or. A creator is going to post something that someone they look up to that, that's going to give them something, a roadmap, stats, something to help them make a better decision tomorrow. Until you learn how to do that, you're going to have a tough time competing out here, man, because influencer marketing is way different in this in this massive tech space and it's getting better and better and stronger and, and tougher because there's only the very few people who can who can do that and be looked up to. Great answer. Um, curious, when looking at success at ClickUp and, and Influencer, what does that look like for you guys? How do you define success with an influencer campaign? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's, I mean, it's, it's, it used to be, it used to be the normal things, right? Likes, comments, da, da, da. No, awareness. honestly, not, not, yeah, awareness isn't as big for us anymore. Now, like I, I am tracked on how many workspace signups I get every month from social and you, and you best believe we track that well. So like, I know, you know, if I get, if I have 6,000 or 20,000, you know, in the month. So I, I know when I have a successful month, so a successful campaign for me is is how many people did not know about ClickUp, find ClickUp and sign up. That is that is it. And 
it's very powerful if you can build a social machine from that because most people just pay for ads or most people just, you know, really put a ton of work in the blog. But a lot of people sleep on social. Obviously, some don't, you know, but when you get that right, when you nail that and and it's, it can be cheaper than ads, right? And and you're still getting awareness while you do it. You still get word of mouth because people, people might talk about a great ad, but they're really going to talk about when you do some awesome social posts. So they'll say, man, click up. I got, I love what they do. They'll put some music in there. They'll like, Build a doc that really helped me out. You know, that, that's what I want people talking about. Click up. Um, so that's, you know, it's also your perception. Your social is your perception. If, if your social is weak, if you're doing the same thing that people are doing 10 years ago, posting like a little image and, hey, sign up for our, our software, people are really not going to look at you the same as a company who is taking their time, creating amazing content, adding value and, and getting involved with strong people. Yeah, 100%. We share that philosophy and have more of a performance lens on the influencer work that we're focused on now. And it's like a journey. It's incremental. It's test and learn, figure it out. Um, what along your journey, like, have there been any just grand slams, like big success stories? And what does that look like today with that creator? Yeah. So, you know, we had uh, Ali Abdal was was the biggest grand slam I've ever worked with. And that was a tough one. You know, I, I had to fly to London and meet with his team. Um, you know, he's 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 pretty locked into like his his current tools. And he had never really, uh, you know, tried ClickUp. And so I remember like going, meeting his team, not even putting any pressure, just just meeting him and just showing him ClickUp. And I gave him early access to 3.0, which is actually coming out uh, on the 16th. Uh, I'm sure you, we already gave it to you guys, but everyone else will be getting 3.0, uh, you know, the 16th. And he had it early and he just, on his own, you know, I didn't pay him, didn't didn't do anything there, just created a video um, speaking about, you know, 3.0 and how this is is really changing things and he loved the customization and man, the amount of signups that came in after that was just, was just wild. And, and again, no, no pay, really just spending time learning him and, you know, take, taking time to give him one of my best trainers to, to dive in and show him what ClickUp would look like. Uh, so I think every single time I can give you a consistent, a consistent thing for us has been that rather than um, just telling someone, Hey, check out ClickUp. Like when I know someone has a influence, I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm going to give them the white glove service. I'm going to give them our highest package free just like I did you all, I'm going to give give you a trainer to come in, set up your ClickUps. They set up for them because sometimes that's the hardest step. Like, And so, and these people are busy. They don't have time to revamp their entire business in a new tool. I get that. So that's why I, I'm so close with all of our trainers, our consultants. And I'll say, hey, do this for me. Give me a, a good rate. Bill me later. But I don't care how many, I don't care if it takes 10 hours, 20 hours, make them, make ClickUp look great for them and make make it, make their life easier. And I know they can do that if they take the time. So that's that's what I've done on many different social occasions. That has been where the biggest and most natural posts come from because they're just grateful that we took that time and that they actually are saving time. And I'm not tell, I'm not sending them a script. I'm not telling them what to say. They're coming back and creating a video because they feel compelled. You know, it's almost like what I've done my whole life. When I meet someone, I just usually look to add value to them. I don't look to just mm-hmm. ask for something. I just try to add value and I don't look for anything back. And then later, if I do think of something, it's not really a favor. Like I've already helped them and like, hey, this would help me. It's not that hard of you. And that's kind of what I've done with my influencer marketing click up is just give them the tool and hope the trainer can find something to say sometime. And if it, and I'm not going to say we're perfect and we, there might be someone whose use case, a tool is better. That will happen. But when it's natural and like they feel and they're like, damn, this saved me this step. Their automations are so good for this. I don't have to even think about this. And then they speak it to a camera. It's great. It's gold. I think what you guys are doing is pretty innovative. You know, I think working with influencers, um, you know, just on the B2B side or SaaS side is a newer thing. Um, I do think like the sentiment around that is shifting a little bit, but what would you say to, you know, another B2B SaaS marketing person or influencer person or someone that is kind of seeing others like you guys see success with the influencer? Like what would your recommendation be to them uh, just in terms of like the opportunity uh, to kind of market your product with influencers from the B2B perspective. Yeah, I would say the first thing you need to do is you need to understand that B2B has changed. Like five, seven years ago, it used to be like, no matter what big software you like, you end up purchasing, you were going to talk to someone, right? You were going to set up a call. You're going to talk to maybe, you know, 20, 10, whatever different tools. Now it's not the case. Like most people are going to make their decision by looking at the comparison pages. They're going to look and say, okay, you have this feature, you have this feature, you cost this. Like B2B has changed. It's almost like B2C now in the way that, at least more so than it was, you're still going to talk when you get down to your final two or three to a rep, but you're going to do a lot of your shopping on your own. So what you need to understand is that by getting by getting on someone's radar in a different way, one, where do people spend most of their time? Luckily, I keep my phone away from me when I'm working, but 
most people are on these phones. Like they, they are there. So the best way you can get to someone on their phone, sure, you can do an ad, uh, but is is through someone and and finding a thought leader. And then secondly, it's the perception. You know, we can we can try to put beat around the bush or not, but you know that when you see someone that you look up to using a product, you want to check it out. Like I, I mean, we all do. There is there is no immunity to that. Now you can tell if someone's just standing up there and they've been paid, but if it's genuine and they're they're fully using a tool and they're telling you it you know makes their life easier, you're gonna try it. I I do it from the same people I named to you, like Roberto and more. You know, I see them drop a new tool and I see them show the advantages. I want to try it. And then I go in and I do the free trial. So I think, um, you know, I, I think not trying it is, is detrimental. And then there's, there's, other, there's other things you're probably not even doing. Think about how much better your ad could be with a recognizable face, with someone who knows how to create content that this audience likes. You know that if you know that your audience follows a certain type of person, get them in your ad because they're going to recognize the face or they're going to recognize the style of content they create. And they're going to feel more, they're going to feel, you know, more sticky. They're going to want to stay and they're going to want to watch it. So if you're not using influencers, even, even if you don't, if you're worried about influencer marketing, because it is a test, like, and you have, it's like everything good. Like you, you can't just throw five grand and think you're going to get some immediate, you know, direct return. It's got to be thought out. There's got to be a strategy. There's got to be a purpose. But if you do a really good campaign and you get this person to create a video and then you run ads with that video and, and then you retarget and then you have a different video, uh, I mean, the, the benefits are, are endless there. And also the perception that you can build of your brand. So I, I see so many reasons. And again, you just have to realize that, that times have changed. So it sounds like, um, you know, first piece of advice is in the prospecting. Stay in your ICP. Know where your community is. Second is make sure that they love your product and it comes across authentic and honest. Yeah. Um, that's a hard one, though. Like a lot of people get that wrong. And a lot of times influencer content, working with creators, that doesn't translate from brands to, to the content. Sounds like you guys have have cracked that. What what are some tips that you have when starting a relationship? Because that's what this is like starting a relationship with a creator. How do you translate so it's coming across authentic and um, you know real for them? Yeah, I think it's all it's all in the beginning, um, and it's it's it almost is going against what everyone says to do. Like a lot of these things that I do still read are saying, hey, you know, send them a brief and da da da. I I, I don't do any of that anymore, right? I, I really don't unless it's something super direct that I need them to do. Because one, like that is, that's the biggest fault alone. Like when a creator has to read something, they're not creating. You've taken that away from them. Now they're just, they're just reading or they're just, you know, re revamping something you wrote. So I, I think you can't give them a script. I think you need to make friends with them first and you got to let them use the tool first. Like you can't just as them, have them make something. So I think the key is, uh, I, I almost wish I wasn't going to weigh the secret, but what we do is, is, you know, you've got to have someone teach them your tool. They have to understand it. They have to like, and then you have to like, you can't come into them just saying, hey, we're going to work together. Let's, let's talk rates. What I do is I just reach out and I say, hey, look, um, I'm sure you use something to manage your work. I don't know how well it works for you. We're completely customizable. We can adapt to anything, any workflow. Um, would you be open to just try and click up? I'm going to give it to you free. I'm going to help you get it set up. I'm going to make your life so much easier. And if you don't like it, all good, no harm, no foul. But if you do, um, you know, I'd love to work with you and, and, and have you speak about like what, what does become easier for me once we set this up. So I think it's all in the beginning relationship. It's removing briefs and um, it's, it's, it's not giving them a script. It's letting them feel, letting them use the product, having a, a realization themselves and then just having them go put that on camera. And then also lastly is making it as easy as possible for them. Like what I've also learned is um, I, should, I give them other options. Like if I'm like, hey, look, if you are busy and you don't have this time to edit, shoot something. I have editors here. I have editors on deck. So maybe I'll take okay. that step away from you. Let me make it as easy as possible especially if I know it's a busy creator or, you know, someone who might take more time. Now that now the time is on me. They give me the work I need to project manage and get that edited and get that out rather than waiting on a creator who might be trying to edit for three or four other brands. You mentioned something really important on that side and I just want to highlight it, which is, and this is what we say to our clients, um, and it's friction is a community killer. Like when you're when it comes to working with influencers who are people, if there is any bit of friction when it comes to them trying your product or trying your service, uh, learn, getting up to speed on how it works, the value props, the benefits, a really long brief, having to come through a brief or getting them a tracking link or some type of link when they're creating the content, like any bit of friction in that process um, really stands in the way from, you know, really any company building a successful influencer strategy or community. So I, I thought that was really important. Giving away uh, secrets here. I, I, I think, um, you know, people can copy a brief but people can't copy relationships and community because that's built with time. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, no one's going to copy a Chris Cunningham. Uh, I think oh, the way you're approaching it and building <laughs> is really smart and tough to duplicate. I appreciate that. It is. It is. Yeah. And, and also, I think, too, it's something to highlight, which has been something that we've we've experienced, like dating back to our time almost a decade ago at Shipped. And I think like our secret sauce and something that has allowed us to be successful in influencer. And there, there's a lot of things that go into being successful when it comes when it comes to partnering with influencers. But the thing that has been consistent is we focus on building relationships and we're always thinking it through the lens of how can we build win-win relationships and just knowing your your background and your story and our relationship just between us and you i think you are um i think that is a, a consistent theme or something that comes to mind when i think about your success i don't know if there's someone that's better at building good relationships with partners and influencers i think Thank you miss man. that when it comes to influencer I think it's important. I think I think the relationship is key. Like I'm not just like hitting him up for work. I'm friends with him. And that I mean, how cool is that to have so many friends that, that do have influence? But it's not because I'm looking to gain. You know, I think they can feel that. I think like I, I think again, I'm glad that I come from like a small town. I'm not coming at them like, hey, you know, I'm, I I need you to give me a better deal. I'm not doing that. I'm not gonna rip anyone off because we're friends. I'm here just trying to learn and 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 again, also like if it's if it's a deal outside of ClickUp, I think Again, it goes back to the re reason why I think this has worked for me. The very first video I ever made, actually, I went back on my Instagram and found it. The very first video I ever made was me just saying that like, uh, you know, I was like, my whole strategy in life has been this one thing and it just keeps working for me. And it's what I said earlier, it's like when I meet someone, right away my wheels are turning. Like, okay, who could I connect to them? Because I know so many people. I, be, I speak to so many people on a daily basis. It's 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 crazy. But then the, immediately as I'm doing that, especially when I like and I respect their work, I'm like, okay, who... Who can they help that is looking for what they have? And I just keep doing that. And because uh, why not? Why not connect two people that I've gotten to meet that'll never meet? I've introduced multiple couples who've gotten married that would have never known each other. You know, I just love, I love putting great people together. It's the best, best formula I've ever had. And I want to keep doing it with you all as well, as we've always done. So what does the, um, the team structure look like? Who supports you? What does it look like? Yeah, yeah. So I have a cool, I have a couple of different programs under me. Um, I have three different people who manage like the day-to-day -day of, of posting across all platforms, scheduling out the content. Um, and Armani's been my right hand there. He's amazing. Um, he he kind of leads that team and he has two under him. And basically they're just, they're getting all the, the content from influencers, from our internal team, from designers, from MoGraph, uh, videographers. They're getting all that content and they're scheduling it out. Um, and then I have a whole other team that's more like growth focused. So that's probably about five people. And what that's doing is is finding the influencers, creating videos for ads. Um, we also have other like cool like growth strategies we do where we create different pages and and things like that that are that are ran by us, but that are you know not totally us. Um, so we have different pages like we have like a uh, like lessons of a CEO, YouTube Shorts, and Twitter, and we own at projects on Twitter. You know, so we. We own a lot of these different pages that we also try to find that are backed by ClickUp, but are just more to to add value to to certain niches. So that team is is like four with some contractors. They're running a lot of different pages, and so every single day they're creating value based docs, they're creating tweets, they're creating LinkedIn posts, they're creating um, static images that will uh, that will ultimately bring traffic to ClickUp, but not just from a ClickUp page. Because if you learn, sometimes it's easier to grow a page by niche. So we have like agency up. Uh, agency up speaks to agency owners like you all and it's just creating content just creating content for agencies and you know we've grown that to like 30 30 40 000 followers and it's all agency so now i know and we have a new feature that's great for agencies i can put it there uh so it's it, you know it's, it's much bigger than than just click up and then we have uh some copywriters some videographers uh, we have three three full-time like kind of videographers editors and then we have two copywriters and they're they're kind of doing what we call newsjacking. I learned this from Ryan Reynolds. I'm sure you guys have researched this as well. Ryan Reynolds bought an agency and just literally told them, hey, all you're going to do is look what's going on in the news, create content about that, and make it for my companies, for every single one. That's literally what he built this crazy agency. It's one of the top agencies now. So I'm trying to replicate that in my own mini way of, of having someone who just follows the news, checks everything that's popping right now, and then we create content and find a way to bring it back to ClickUp. And not like in an overly done way, Mm -hmm. um, but more just like, hey, you know, AI just released humanoid bots. You know, is this going to da da da? And then so, sometimes we don't even bring it back to ClickUp, but sometimes we find a way to, be, you know, to say, hey, by the way, if you want your AI inside of your project management tool, ClickUp has AI. Um, so that's that's kind of the the team structure. Uh, it's 
it's a it's a good machine. I feel like we're flowing well. Unconventional. Unconventional. Yeah, for sure. We've gotten even bigger in the fact that we've now moved into a team we call up marketing. So now I'm my my team and my little silo, but I work with uh, you know, a campaigns team, the email team, the blog team. Cause now what we've done really well at ClickUp over the past, this is new over the past six months, is we've all just come together more. So now if a blog is hot and I know it's hot, they're gonna tell me and I'm gonna create social. If I have a social post that's hot, I'm passing it back to the blog team. Then the email team is doing a campaign. We're all kind of coincide. So the the growth or we call it team up marketing, God, that team's like 60 or 70 now. And it's just, it's a well-oiled machine. We are trying, I mean, even the ads team, I'm creating content for the ads team. If an ad is popping, they're letting me know and I'm creating more of it. It's just a lot of us meeting together. What's popping? Okay, let's double down. That was my next question because you left the pay team kind of out of your initial list. But yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of synergy between influencer, the organic content engine, and then the pay team because you're just spinning off content from community building like that. So what does that dynamic look like and how is that fueling your paid strategy at ClickUp? Yeah, I mean, you guys do a great job of this. I'm not teaching anything, but so many people like don't realize that social media can be a testing ground for your ads. Like how, how simple should that be? Like you can put some, you can put three different variations of a video out. You can see which one does better on social. You should probably put the money behind that one on ads, right? So we use social as a playground for the ad team so much. Uh, but secondly, like back, back and forth, like if, I might give the ad team a video that I didn't think was going to do that great. And it's, it's giving crazy CPMs, right? They hit me back. So create more, use that creator more. Um, there's synergy between paid. And the more you make, the more you make your entire growth marketing, whatever you want to call that, uh, come together, the better. And and we're even bringing sales. Like we even have sales in, in now, like all together, because we want to learn from sales. Like we realize how we were, and so many companies have this history of sales and marketing fighting, right? Like they do, and we've had it too. We fixed it by almost bringing us together and having common goals. Like, you know, now we can have meetings and say, where are you losing deals? Where are you winning deals? I want to know where you're winning and I can bring that back and I can now create an ad. Um, I, I think your ad, your ad team, your marketing team, they have to be together. And if you can find a way to bring in sales and everyone else, it's a superpower. But to answer your initial question, I, I mean, I have a call with Andy who runs our ads. Um, she's amazing after this. I mean, I speak to her twice a week. And and we dive in fully. I want to know everything. I want to know all her numbers, what's doing well. And then she teaches me kind of, um, you know, what she needs. And we can create both, you know, like as an influencer is creating a video for social, they can make a different variation that's better for an ad. Um, and, and having these real life, like these real life ads do well, like the ad you guys did for us, showing how you use ClickUp to run your agency. That, that was crucial for like, it did really well. So I think, you know, if I didn't know that she needed that, I would have never known to ask you. So I wouldn't even thought of that. But now I learn. So just being hand in hand, the more you're talking, the better. And I know it's tougher with remote culture and et cetera, but you've got to stay. Yeah. I mean, it, we see that a lot. Um, that a lot of times, especially big companies, you guys have figured out as a bigger company, but a lot of those times as a permanence are in silos and you have someone on the influencer team who knows that this content would be good for ads or someone on the ads team who wants this content, but like they operate in silos and that bridge is not there. You're a relationship guy. You figure this out, you know, within a bigger company like ClickUp. What advice do you have for bridging departments that kind of run their own place a lot of the time? Yeah. You ready for this? So this has been our thing, man. Like, honestly, this has been like our secret weapon of the year. Um, and we're doing it over and over and over again. And it might sound crazy. We're doing these things that we call hackathons. And the way this works is we 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 bring like three different teams together who are working on a common project. We fly them out to San Diego or sometimes different cities. We fly them all out. May sound expensive, uh, but we fly them out. And then for the week, we're like, Leo, you're going to like, we give them a crazy goal, like a goal that would usually take them an entire quarter. We give it to them to get done in a week. We give them crazy incentives if they get it done, like, like wild prizes, money, dinners, games, everything. And it becomes this fun, crazy mission. And, and they don't always hit the goal, but they get so damn close. It's crazy. And so like, we've done the math. Like, don't think that we're, like, we're, we're not a company to blow money. Like we're very, we're like the opposite. We're very, very good about that. Like we've, Zeb has just been that way forever. Like we, we watch everything that comes through and we get our money back every single time, like three X, four X fold for the amount of productivity we get done. So we take these different teams, they get to know each other, right? Someone you've just seen on a Zoom, now you're hanging out. And then after you work that whole long day, you're having a drink together, you're having dinner together. So one, you're getting to know each other, you're understanding each other's problems, you're understanding what works really well for one another, you're learning. You're there, the camaraderie, the like the what gets done. And then when they, the, the final, like the last night, they always party, they always have a good time, send them out to like a Padres game or, or not in the playoffs now, so they can't do that. 
But, um, you know, we send them out to something cool. We let them have fun. We let them enjoy themselves. And, uh, and again, they, you'd be, you'd be so shocked to see the productivity that gets done. Like, and then we, we announce it each week. Like we come back and say, yo, like sales, uh, you know, growth and up marketing came together this week. We set this audacious goal to get X, Y, and Z done and, and we got it done or we got close to done. It's going to be, you know, live next week, something like that. And I mean, people just get hyped. And then so people get excited when they get tapped on for a hackathon. Like, yeah, it's going to be a tough, like I have one coming up in three weeks. I'm stoked because I know it's going to be a tough week, but I know I'm going to celebrate. We're going to get crazy stuff done and I can take a, a day and, you know, kind of breathe afterwards because we got so much done. We're so far ahead. So yeah, hackathons, that's our secret, man. That's bridging the gap. It's just getting people, it's, and it's a cool way to still get people around each other. And sure, like there's a little cost in flying people out and we, we've got deals with the hotels in town. They're at the ClickUp office. We've got deals with the restaurants. So we've made it like as, as, as affordable as possible. But when you get that much productivity done in a week, you can't put a price tag on that. You're moving faster than your competitors. Uh, you're making me reminisce about ship days, being on the brand side, doing those hackathons and a hundred percent doubling down, double clicking on that. It's a incredible way to make giant leaps forward. So definitely recommend that, especially in today when it's like remote culture, like you got to bring people together like that. Bring them, bring people together, like find a way, find a way to bring them together. You all do it well. Like, I mean, I mean, you, you all even still, what I like is you guys go on site with your clients. Like you go on site all the time. I know when you're in Alabama, I know, I know what you're doing there. You know, like I know what's going, I know when you guys are visiting your clients. I think that's key with agencies too. Like I can't tell you how many in the past that I worked with that I never saw them except through a computer screen, right? With you guys right away. It was like, you're there. Let's meet in person. Let's, let's do this. And that's a, de- a different step than not many are willing to take, but you guys see it as well. Like the value of being around someone in person is I mean, the, the stuff that we got done in a day, we couldn't have done on a phone call together. You know, it's just not possible. Relationships in influencer, in business, like having a relationship first mindset attitude is everything. I think for, for me personally, that has kind of been my North Star and I feel like has enabled me to be successful in influencer and, you know, has brought a lot of value to what we're doing here. So I think my recommendation, and I've just seen this play out in our in our relationship, if you can get in person with people, especially nowadays, you just got to do it. You got to, even Find if you just got to book the ticket, like invest in the relationship. You might not see an ROI directly from, from, from doing it, but like it, it always pays itself out in dividends. I guarantee like by doing that and making that investment, like if, if there was a stat or a way to study that, like the long-term relation, I guarantee a kind that you go visit in person will last longer than one that you don't. I mean, it just seems that way. Like, cause you understand one another, you can get get more done. You're just, you're just close. Okay. Final thoughts and questions, but you know, looking backwards at your career, uh, in total, what has been, if you had like a takeaway to leave with people, um, and this could be in business, this could be in social media influencer. I'll let you kind of open ended here, but like leave us with one sort of idea, big takeaway that comes from your journey. I think the, the biggest take, I'll just try to put it all together as, as I re- replay my journey is like, don't get too caught up in the details. Like, you know, don't get too caught up on, on trying to make every little thing perfect. Like you just got to make decisions and move. I'm seeing this with other companies. We feel like, oh, should we do this? Or should we do this? I click up, we didn't think about anything. And, and I'll give you this, a tiny quick story behind it. And when I first learned this lesson, I remember when, when we were like looking to push out a new version of ClickUp and we kept saying it was coming um, like early, early days, like we had, or some, some new big feature, whatever it was. And, you know, we're working late. We're in, we're in, uh, we're in San Francisco. We're, we're just grinding as late. And like our CTO looks at Zeb and he's like, look, man, like it's not gonna be ready by tomorrow. And Zeb's like, but I, you know, I promise like it's, we just got to do it. And he's like, but it's, it's not, there's going to be some bugs. Like I've done everything I can, man, but there's going to be some bugs. And so we all got quiet and a little sad. We're all eating like our vegan Chinese takeout or whatever it was at the time. And, and, uh, <laughs> All of a sudden, Zeb just goes, why don't we just ship it? And we're like, what? Like He's like, just ship it anyway. Like, People know we're just trying to build fast. Like They understand what we're trying to do here. Let's just ship it. If there's a bug, there's a bug. You know, We'll fix it. And that's when I thought. I was like, you know what? You're right. Like, <clears throat> We can even reward them for finding the bug. We can say, like, hey, thanks for sending me that bug because now we're, we're turning our customers into our bug pictures. Thank you. Here's three free months of ClickUp. You're awesome. I'm going I'm to hit you back as soon as this bug is fixed too. And so we started doing that. So we started shipping every single week, which is nuts in, in development history. No one does that. No one does that. We start shipping every single week. And so people will realize, yeah, there'll be a bug here and there. But the cool thing is they give me three free months when I find the bug. So people almost got excited to find the bug. 
So we had we didn't we have to hire bug we didn't have money enough for, for bug trackers at the time. So we'd have to hire them. And then like they'd quickly let us know. We'd give them three free months. They were excited. And I'd also reach back out like, hey, by the way, it's been two days. That bug is fixed. Like, so thank you. We got it done. Appreciate you sharing. And it became like a positive thing. And, and I think that's what we really changed our whole mindset is just start shipping things. Like we stopped, we started just making decisions and moving. We stopped overthinking. And that became like a, a click up core value, a philosophy that and then I try to do that now. Like I'm not always right with every piece of content I put out or everything I say on the podcast, but you can't look back. You got to move. You got to make decisions. You got to be, you got to be, you got to be all in, man. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing I can give. And, and again, also something we said earlier is, is being scrappy, like really doing the things that other companies want to do. Another thing we did, this company Productive was going down. I was stalking their Facebook group and I saw that they were going to close and they were going to leave all their customers and just their work was going to disappear. They, were, they didn't even build an export. So like their customers are freaking out in, in, the, in the, the group, the Facebook group. And I'm like, damn, we got two weeks. And our CTO, Alex Sharkowski, the genius is like, yo, I, I can build this. I can build, I think I can do it in time. And he built, he stays up like all day, all night. And he builds this within like three days to spare. And we move almost all those customers that were like, hey, you guys don't know us. We're ClickUp. We just built an export. You can have all your work in ClickUp tomorrow. And all of a sudden we had so many more clients. So because we did the work, that no one else is willing to do because we paid attention, because we cared and we were, you know, studying our competition, we added on, we had to hire so many more reps. And that, that was a big step in ClickUp history. All of a sudden we took a lot of customers that would have taken so much effort of mine, of sales to, to get, we got them all in one, like one day, one swoop. So stay scrappy, make decisions, move, and you will, you will find a way to win. Mic drop. Incredible advice. And that the benefit to that is you have the relationship side, which kind of circles all back to that. The people in your community, they feel seen. They feel like a part of something. They're helping you build something. And so they're much stickier and just love your brand that much more by having that sort of vulnerability um, and sort of move fast and and uh, have them feel heard along that process. So I love yeah, that. That's amazing. Well, man, this so, is awesome. You guys are a blast. I'm so glad we get to catch up over a podcast and congrats on launching the podcast too. Everyone talks about doing it. Now you're in. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we made it here. It's been exciting to launch. We'll have to do it again. You know, yeah, uh, we had to cut it short. I've got like 10 more questions I wanted to. I'm get. ready to talk to you guys anytime, man. Anytime, always. Yeah, dude, we well, might we have to do it in too. person. We should. Next time I'm going to let you know I'm in San Diego. We can link up. All right, Chris. Well, it's been a pleasure, uh, as yep. always. You're uh, intelligent, smart, and a uh, guy full of wisdom and also very entertaining. So, I'm sure our guests, uh, the, the visitor that watches the podcast, will have enjoyed this. And let's get episode two on the books. Yeah.